Uh, Theo, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, the new movie, Escape the Field, coming out on May 6th, so just about a week away. Um, you know, first and foremost, what was it that attracted you to the script, and in particular, the role of Tyler? Yeah, uh, Escape the Field's a unique one for me. There was a lot of connective tissue. Um, the director's a really good friend of mine. Okay. Uh, you know, we had done this crazy movie in uh, Bulgaria many years ago called Ghosts of War, which was just a wild experience. They should do like a, a heart of darkness on that movie. Um, and then uh, and we'd been really close since. And then the pandemic hit like everybody on the planet. And I wasn't sure what was ever going to happen with Hollywood again, to be completely right. honest. And I was sitting here in Texas and I was like, um, what are we going to do? You know, are we ever going back to work? How are we going to do this? You know, how do we do this, but being concerned with other people and all this. And then Emerson had called me and he was like, Hey, we're going to do this movie in Hamilton, Ontario, just in a cornfield. It was only a couple of months into kind of the, the world changing event that we had. And it was almost like we were going to go on this journey together, like, see if we can do this. Can we do this? Like, is this going to work in just one location, doing zones, testing five days a week? So it was as much, it was almost like a movie within a movie. And, yeah. um, and it was the first thing back. I think we were one of the first films back in the world. And uh, so that was one of the major intrigues for me. And then also, I'd never shot a film in just one location, right? And I'm just a giant... Where am I? I'm like an no 80s I just woke up in this field. crazy person. So yeah. I like love film. You know, I always think of children in a corn and stuff like, you know, and stuff like that. But I love like, so anytime you say the word corn, even if it's corn on the cob, I'm like children in a corn. And so, it's, <laughs> so I just like the aspects of it. And then my wife took me to my first escape room uh, before this. So I learned kind of what that meant. So there was a lot of aspects, but mainly it was friends. Shane's a friend of mine. And it was, um, let's get this going and let's see what we can do. And then again, when you're in one location, it's all about the acting, which is, you know, that's what I'm there for. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of which, you know, I, I checked it out this weekend. It's, uh, it, it's, it's got some chill bumps in there. I will definitely say that for sure. You know, you're trying to figure out what's going on. The performances I thought were great. And I too, I mean, in, in tr always intrigued on that. I don't want to say one shot, but that one location where it yeah. is going to be the acting that really takes over very similar to um, like the hateful eight with Tarantino yep. where it takes place, you know, yep. and primarily that building. And um, you know, so with that being said, obviously the main location is out in this field. What was it like, you know, being able to record, like where was the weather cooperating with you guys? Well, like how no. was that like? No, nothing was cooperating. I mean, oh, one wow. we had about we had about four dollars to do the movie. So it's like, you know, every day you're changing something where it's like, oh, we're not doing that scene. We can't do that scene, even though we're on one location. Yeah. Um, so you know, you're battling against budget and then you're battling against kind of like the elements. It was, you know, it was freezing. It was even though we were on this giant cornfield, there was a lot of stuff that we just physically couldn't do because of um well, we're never going to get the CGI for this and we're never going to get that and we're never going to be able to record that. So you're making concessions. And to be honest, it's, I love doing films like that because ultimately the game you're playing is like, you're going to hit or miss. Yeah. You're, 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 you're going to, it's going to work or it's not, or it's going to work for a good amount of the film and then it's not. And that's okay because I think that's more important. Now I've been on, you know, films that have endless money and endless sure. time. And to be honest, Sometimes that's a cause for more mistakes and things going really wrong, right? Which we've seen a few films that are out right now that you're like, really, you made that movie for this much money and you got everything wrong? So it's like, you know, there's, there's positives and negatives. So I thought that it was just really interesting because we had to figure it out. And Emerson is such an efficient director. He storyboards every single thing. It's okay. kind of like, hey, I want to do this. I want to do that. And then because of the situation, we were able to have all these weeks of rehearsal because we were in quarantine in the hotel. Right. So again, it was like, we got to really get to know each other even more than we did. And we got to kind of figure things out before we went out there. So um, yeah, it was a lot of, it's again, it's just like a lot of things that I do. It was just sometimes luck and timing is more important than any other aspect you're trying to get. 
Gotcha, gotcha. So as far as the inspiration from Tyler, you know, one of my favorite characters, not just because it's you, but, no, you know, thanks. he's very cool. I mean, you're, you're awesome. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I'm, I'm geeking out over here. <laughs> um, but, you know, very cool, level-headed, you know, is pretty much the voice of reason compared to the other characters on there. As far as inspiration for that, is that just kind of how you are in general? Was was Emerson, you know, did he play a part as far as, all right, here's the inspiration for the character? Like, tell me a little bit how you got yeah. that inspiration for Tyler. Yeah, you know, one, I, I mean, for most of my career, I've played bad guys, right? Yeah. Like ba bad villainous people with hearts yeah. where it's like, it's kind of a bad guy, but I kind of still like him, right? Yeah. That's kind of what I've played with Tyler. I kind of wanted to reverse it where he's a good guy, but I don't want you to know that right, right. away. You know what I mean? And, right. and, and that was like, how can I switch this? where me being just me in general, you're going to be unsure of yeah. as when you see me, if you know anything that I've done before. Yeah. And I love that ambiguity in my characters. So with Tyler, what I loved is like, as we learn more about him, we learn that he's just like this father and he's this and he's that, and he's like this good guy. So would I say it's me? I don't know. I'm, you know, I, I make this bold statement that says like, I don't exist. Meaning like I, exist within the characters I'm playing or what I'm doing. Like when I'm with my kids, I'm a father. And when I'm with my wife, I'm a husband. And when, you know, my dog's right here, you know, I'm whatever she needs me to be. So it's yeah. like, I, I don't know what I am. I'm all of these things. So with Tyler, it was just one of those moments where it's like, I got to, to really maybe do something that I've been doing a little more of, which is like maybe leaning more towards the goodness and not this, you know, psychopathic killers that I play a lot of. <laughs> gotcha. And I, and I know you just mentioned that Shane West is one of your good friends. Uh, yeah. you know, how far do you, how far do you guys go back? So we did forever. Uh, when did we do our first movie together? Uh, we did this crazy movie. I can't even remember that. Oh, I do remember the name. It was called Stonehouse and they changed it to Red Sands. Okay. It was way back in the day. And, uh, and then, we used to live near each other when I used to live in LA and uh, you know, it was him and like Aaron Paul and like all these people. And we all just used to, you know, it was a different world, different times, early, early two thousands. And um, yeah. so we'd always stayed in touch. We'd always been friends, same agent, same, everything, um, same public, same, everything, just yeah. same world. Yeah. And uh, when this came up, it was exciting because, you know, I love him and he's just a good dude and uh, he's solid and he's a kick-ass actor. And, uh, you know, I usually run like a, like a feral cat from everything to do with Hollywood, but um, yeah. there are certain people that I, that I definitely talk to. He's one of them. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, just to, you know, sidetrack just a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. I got to say your performance as Gene in true story, outstanding. I Crazy. mean, it, it was it was amazing. Now, you know, I, there's no way to really get around it. I mean, you played that character to a T. You, do you have just any kind of crazy stories as far as, you know, maybe a, a obsessed fans that may have gone a little bit too far, obviously not naming names out there, but yeah. where was your inspiration drawn from Gene? Because I mean, I think you just touched on the heart of a lot of people and it's not that it was a crazy, crazy fan, but definitely a little bit over the top compared to the norm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, for sure. It, yeah. See, here's the thing, and I don't think it's a I don't think it's a bad quality. The problem is, is that what I've seen in my own life is that when you love something so Same much, right now, we love. your yeah. excitement oh, no, almost on, overwhelms reason. Right. Yeah. So it's like you know when we were doing Sons is a great example. Like Sons was such a an enormous thing, and it meant so much to people that there's a a thing that you might create in your head that might not necessarily be true. So sure. then when you're in a position like Gene was with kid, all reason goes out the window. It's right. just the story has been already created, lived out, told. It's not, I don't necessarily think it's a bad quality. It's just the way it is. It's what our, uh, our, our way of entertainment facilitates, right? Yeah. We, we believe certain things or certain things mean so much to us. Like, you know, me introducing my kids to the Goonies, the Goonies means so much to me as yeah. a film, it's bigger than the film, yeah. right? Yeah. 
and, and same with Sandlot. But when I met the guys from the Sandlot, I'm like, oh, cool, what's up? And we're all just hanging out and, and, and you get past the moment quick, but there are people that can't get past the moment quick right. where it's like, no, 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 you don't understand. This is bigger than this. And with Gene, I think it was just, I was able to amplify a lot of the things that I've seen, you know, and, uh, and again, I don't, I don't think because there was no harm, there was no, like, he was such a good person yeah. <laughs> that it was yeah. like, yeah, that he just, it meant so much. And I think that that's why uh, I've always, I'm, I'm a fan built person. I mean, if right. I didn't have, I started as an extra, if people weren't behind me the way they are, yeah. I wouldn't be here talking to you. So I was able to pull from, both the good and, and I guess what society would consider the bad from my experiences. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, before we wrap up real quick, I had a lot of fans want me to ask this. I know you probably can't, you know, go, go too deep, deep into it, but is there a chance that shades might come back into the MCU? <laughs> yeah, that's really interesting. Um, so there, you know, we were getting ready to do season three before right. everything went down. Yeah. I had read season three. Yeah. And Cheo and and actually Charles, who show ran True Story and all that, all the people who were involved, the plan was always for Shades to die at the end of season three. That was the plan. Okay. But, and something to do with his son and very, you know, in the canon of kind of the comics and all that. Obviously that all goes out the window. Yeah. Um, now with the return of Charlie and Daredevil, with the return of Kingpin, right? Right. right. I think that when you, if someone would have asked me three months ago, I would have said, you're nuts because our shows are so different, right? right. They're so violent. They're yeah. like the wire and the Sopranos compared to like, this is us. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this is not, we're not even in the same world. Right. But now with Moon Knight, mm -hmm. now with really kind of the way things are starting to get with the TV, you know, with the, with the streaming stuff where it's getting more, maybe with DC, you know, is doing more of like where it's more street, which is yeah. what we were doing. Um, yeah. You know, uh, there's <laughs> always talk. I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how we fit into this world because the yeah. truth is like John said, you know, with the Punisher, with Frank, I think that it, you can't change them. No, no. And Cage I hope is a violent, violent character. He's, yeah you know, manipulative. He's, you know, while he's still got morals and all that, he's also at the end of the day, massacring people on a mass level at times. Right. So I think that unless you're going to keep that, I don't see how they work in yeah. the, in the world, but we'll see. Everything's changing <laughs> every day. Fingers crossed, man. I know, I know yeah. you got to wrap up here. It's a press day for you. I yeah. really appreciate your time. Be sure to check out the movie Escape the Field coming out May 6th. I'll be sure to send your publicist some yeah. stuff. Thank you so much, man. This truly be is kind. Honor. Rewind. Be kind. <laughs> rewind. Everyone.